Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Are you ready to do some subnetting? Well, I hope so because that's what we're going to do today. So far, we've talked a lot about uh, IP addresses and subnetting in terms of theory and in terms of the concepts and all the background information you need to be prepared to actually start doing it. Well, now we're at the point where we're going to get our hands dirty and we're going to start taking some classful networks and we're going to break them up into subnets. So we're going to start with a Class C network because in some ways it's the easiest place to start. And I say that because Class C networks have a limited number of subnetting options. And you'll see exactly what I mean by that once we actually jump into a few examples. Okay, so this is where we actually start applying our knowledge. So let's jump in. And here is our Class C network. 192.168.1.0 and we have our subnet mask here as well 255.255.255.0 as you know in prefix we could express that as what a slash 24 so let's begin by looking at the default subnet mask of a class C network in binary and as expected the first three octets are dedicated to the network portion and the fourth octet is dedicated to the hosts. So what is subnetting? Well, let's, re let's remind ourselves. All it is is we're taking away bits from the host portion in order to create the subnet portion. We're going to start off slow, and we're going to take one bit from the fourth octet, which is our ho host portion for class C. So if we do that, if we take this one guy here and make it a 1, our fourth octet now looks like this. In the decimal, we know that that equates to 128. You should know that by now. In other words, you should know that each bit position has a corresponding decimal value. And I'm just writing out two of them here. You should be able to figure these out pretty quickly by now if you haven't memorized them. Um, the quick and simple way is starting at the left, 128, keep dividing by 2. So this one equals 64, this one equals 32. Okay, you get the point. Commit that to memory if you haven't already. Okay, so we have our new fourth octet in terms of bits and the decimal value. So our new subnet mask looks like this, 255.255.255.128. And if we were to express that in prefix notation, it's a slash 25. If you recall, prefix notation is simply counting the number of consecutive ones. So in the first octet, we had 8, and the 8 in the second, 8 in the third, and then we've created 1 in the fourth. So 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 1 equals 25, and that's how we get the prefix notation. Okay, are you with me so far? Good, let's continue. There are only a few more things to figure out here. Well, how many subnets can we create by using this new subnet mask? In other words, when we apply this subnet mask to the Class C network that we're chopping up, how many smaller groups do we create? In order to figure out that answer, we look at this formula. Two to the power of one. So the answer here is two, meaning by using this new subnet mask, by stealing one bit from the host portion, we can create two subnets from this class C network. Where does this one come from? Well, that is the number of subnet bits in the new subnet mask. In other words, how many bits did we steal from the host portion? Well, we only stole one. So that is what goes into the formula. Two to the power of one, because we only stole one bit, equals two. Okay, well, how many hosts will there be in each of these two new subnets we're creating? That's the next question, and the next answer looks like this. The formula here is now 2 to the 7th, which equals 128. Well, where does the 7 come from? Well, quite simply, that is the number of host bits left over in the fourth octet, that we did not touch. So these seven here, because we stole one, we started off with eight in the octet, we took one away for the subnet, we're left with seven, two to the power of seven equals 128. 
That means we now know the size of the subnet, we know the range. In other words, 128 hosts can fit in each of the two subnets. So the range is going to look like this, 0 through 127. This looks a little funny because we always count the subnet number as one of the hosts. So if this is our first subnet number up here, we start with 0 and we go all the way up to 127. This is really useful because if we need to figure out what the second uh, subnet number is going to be, we simply count in blocks of 128. Does that make sense? If each subnet is now this big, well then if we count in terms of, in chunks of 128, we can find where the second subnet begins. So in other words, if we started here at zero, and our range is 128, so we start at zero, and if we count that as one, we end up maxing out at 127. So that means the next subnet has to start at 128. A way you can do this is if you start off at zero and then just add 128, because that is our chunk that we're working in, you get at the next subnet number. So we created two subnets, and here they are, 1.0 and 1.128. The last thing to figure out is this the valid hosts. You may remember we had a few formulas when we were looking at the classful networks. Well, up here we looked at how many hosts per subnet, and that's the total number. By valid hosts we mean, well, how many of that 128 can we actually assign to a computer or a router or a switch on the network, on this subnet? Well, the answer, it's the same formula, 2 to the power of 7, but we subtract 2. And the reason why we subtract 2 always is this. One of the two is the subnet number itself. So up here, this subnet number or this subnet number here never actually gets assigned to a router or to a computer. So we reserve one for that. The second IP or host that we reserve is known as the broadcast address. In each subnet, each network has a broadcast address. That's a special address that is used to send a packet to everybody in the group. So because of that, you cannot assign it to one person. So if you ever want to send something to the entire group at once, a broadcast message, you send it to the broadcast address of the subnet, and it goes to everybody right away. It's an efficient way of you know yelling out a message to a group of people, something similar to that. Okay, so this is how we broke down um, this classful network, the class C. And to summarize, it would look something like this. So take some time to review what we just went through and then compare it to this summary and um, you know practice this for a little while. Um, let's go ahead and actually do a few more of these to, to really solidify these, these, uh, these methods of subnetting. We're going to use the same class C network in this example. So let's begin by looking at that again in binary. It's a good place to know where we're starting. And this time, let's take more than just one bit from the host portion. In fact, let's get a little bit adventurous, and we're going to take five bits. So one, two, three, four, five. All of those were stealing, and the fourth octet now has a new look to it. Again, if we add up the decimal value of each of the bit positions that we just stole from the host portion, our new decimal value becomes 248 for the fourth octet instead of zero. Likewise, our new subnet mask becomes this, 255, 255, 255, 248. And here, if we add up all of the consecutive ones, we now get a slash 29. We add 8, 8 and 8, now plus 5 equals 29. Now just to refresh our memory, if you're wondering why we didn't steal a host bit from the far right hand side, that's because, like we stated earlier, the subnet mask will always have consecutive ones until it ends and then it's consecutive zeros. You never alternate ones and zeros in the subnet mask.
So in a way, it makes it easier. You always know where to choose your next bit from. If we wanted to extend this to a slash 30, we would then just take the next available bit in the subnet mask. Okay? All right, well, let's figure out what these subnets are and how big they are and what IPs we can assign. How many subnets? Well, this time we took five IPs from the host portion, so it's 2 to the power of 5, which equals 32. So in other words, by applying this new subnet mask to this class C network, we can create 32 subnets. That's pretty good. If we had a lot of different subnets, this is a very good subnet mask to use. Well, how big is each subnet? Well, here you can see it's pretty. It's each one's you know smaller than what we just went through um, in the in the previous example. Here, since we only have three host bits left, we now know that 2 to the power of 3 equals 8. So in each one of the 32 subnets, you will have 8 hosts. So that's the size of each, each subnet, the total size. Likewise, the range, if we're starting with our very first subnet, 192.168.1.0, because we have 8 bits, we start at 0, and then we, we add 7, because we're counting 0. Always remember that. That is the total range. So... That means we can find out, just by adding 8 each time, what all of the 32 subnet numbers are. So for instance, we start here at dot zero, and we add 8, and another 8, and another 8. Each one of these is your new subnet number. And you just keep doing that until you get to the very end of uh, the total possible values in the fourth octet, or until you count 32 of them. Finally, we know the total size of each subnet, but how many of those hosts can we actually use to assign to um, computers or routers? Well, we know the formula will be 2 to the power of 3 minus 2, 1 for the subnet number itself, and 1 for the broadcast address, which gives us 6. So every time you find out the total size, which is 8 in this example, always subtract 2, and here we have 6. So in each one of these 32 subnets, we have 6 IPs that we can assign to routers or switches or to hosts. All right, good. So we just did another one. Let's go ahead and take a look at the summary here. Take a look at the summary, compare it to your notes, run through this example on your own as well, and then compare it uh, to this summary to see if you're on the right track. Here's a list of the different subnet masks you can create. And we started off by taking just one bit and for each one of these, it just continues. So take a look at each one of these and try each one of these just as we uh, performed in the last two examples. And by doing this, you're going to get more and more familiar and comfortable with subnetting. And after a while, these you, you can notice there's a formula for everything, and you'll be able to predict the outcome, and you won't have to take this long method of counting bits every time. Well, congratulations, you've made it to the end of this video. We covered a lot of ground here, and so let's summarize what we talked about. It all comes down to the network, subnet, and host portions of an IP address and the subnet mask when you're subnetting. Okay, so as long as you're familiar and you understand the structure and you understand what the bits are doing, you can never go wrong. If you need to figure out the number of subnets, it's 2 to the power of the number of subnet bits. If you want to figure out the, the size, the range of that particular subnet you've created, it's 2 to the power of all the host bits that are left that you did not steal. And then, of course, we talked about finding the number of valid hosts, the IPs that you can actually assign. And here, it's the same as finding the total range, but you're subtracting two, one for the subnet number itself and one for the broadcast IP. Okay, so that's it. Practice these as much as you can until it becomes like breathing, like second nature to you, okay? So that's it. That is subnetting Class C networks. Thanks for watching and practice every day.